today's video we will continue to explore and discuss the wider Commonwealth universe as imagined by Peter F. Hamilton. In particular, we will take a closer look at Pandora's star, the first quote-unquote full entry to the Commonwealth saga. This 768-page novel was published in the year 2005 and only very, very loosely continues the story of misspent youth. Pandora Star sports a cipher hardness that would be comparable to copper. Not hard, but not quite butter either. Specifically for a space opera set several centuries in the future, Pandora Star takes some liberties with its fundamental assumptions, in particular with physics as we know it, but constructs out of these a world with believable scientific boundaries. This brings me directly to the stellar world building, no pun intended, which spans numerous different distinct planets. In addition, Pandora Star is filled with interesting and intriguing concepts. Some of them might not be completely original, but they are presented from unique perspectives, as we will certainly discuss later. Finally, with easily over 50 named characters, Pandora Star exhibits also a quite vast dramatis personae. Surprisingly, neither Goodreads, Amazon, nor Wikipedia list any awards or even award nominations for a Pandora Star. This could be due to my lacking investigation, so please let me know whether there were awards or nominations for this novel that I missed. In terms of popular reception, Pandora Star scores a respectable 4.2 out of 5 stars based on thousands of reviews on Goodreads, Library Thing and Amazon. Also, there are no news related to any movie, TV or other types of adaptations yet. The novel starts with a quite entertaining prelude set in the 2040s, which establishes the influential scientific developments that will be the foundation of the Intersolar Commonwealth, namely rejuvenation technology, as presented in Misspent Youth, and wormhole technology. The events of the main story begin centuries later, in the 2380s. Humanity has colonized a sphere of stars containing 600 worlds, 400 light-years across, which can be accessed instantaneously through a network of portals and a matured version of rejuvenation is now commonplace. At the edge of this intersolar commonwealth, astronomer Dudley Bose makes an unbelievable observation. The vanishing of an entire star, 1000 light years away. It did not explode, it did not collapse into a black hole. There is no known natural phenomenon that could have caused this. To elucidate this mystery, a faster than light starship is built, since the traditional wormhole technology is not able to span this vast interstellar gap. However, the guardians of selfhood, a radical and potentially violent group that believes that humanity has been infiltrated and manipulated by an alien entity oppose this mission fiercely. Will they be a danger to this mission? And what will await the explorers a thousand light years from the Commonwealth? As you may have glimpsed from this summary, the scientific foundations for Pandora Star do not qualify the novel as hard sci-fi. While there is no physical law that would prohibit rejuvenation technology, its combination with a stored backup copy of one's consciousness is more speculative. Also, faster than light travel of any kind is currently beyond any scientific horizon. Nonetheless, apart from these speculative assumptions, Pandora Star applies its set of scientific boundaries reasonably consistent, with maybe the exception of one subplot that ventures into science fantasy, without spoiling too much here. In general, Peter F. Hamilton is able to build a world that makes sense and feels authentic. It is quite surprising how such a seemingly detailed world can be established on comparatively few pages. Don't get wrong ideas though, Pandora Star is still a rather long book. Some people may complain about Hamilton's excessive descriptiveness, but in my view, details such as the make and model of cars, trains and planes, or the detailed description of buildings, building materials, the vistas and feel of cities on alien planets give the world building its necessary meat. 
However, I can also understand that this might not be for everyone, to each their own. Furthermore, Pandora Star is full of interesting concepts and ideas. For instance, an interstellar train network makes a lot of sense. If the interstellar gaps can be surmounted instantaneously by wormholes, whose operation might require a significant energy supply, limiting their position to a few central hubs. This way of interstellar travel, combined with the widespread adoption of rejuvenation, explains how humanity was able to colonize 600 worlds in a couple of centuries. Populations will grow excessively if death has become a freak occurrence. But there will be no substantial social upheaval if there is virtually limitless room to expand into. Apart from some ground rules, each world of the Commonwealth may adopt the governing style of their choice. So there is a place for nearly everyone, politically, ethnically, religiously and socially speaking. And if that is not the case, there is always another world at the frontier waiting to be tamed. Also, Pandora Star tackles the ramifications of rejuvenation more efficiently than misspent youth, at least in my opinion. Sure, questions related to overpopulation are sidestepped by interstellar colonization, but issues like social stratification and the formation of oligarchies are themes that are explored. Furthermore, questions on a more personal level are raised. What are the dynamics between rejuvenated parents and their adult children? What does this mean for relationships between quote-unquote first-time adults and rejuvenated people? What are the expected and socially accepted duration of a marriage in a world where virtually no one dies? Finally, there is one thing that makes Pandora Star stand out even more in terms of novelty and originality. However, I will not mention it in this video. Not even with a spoiler tag, as I would not wish to take this experience away from anyone. I will mention it in the review of Judas Unchained, the second entry to the Commonwealth Saga, as mentioning contents with spoiler warnings of Pandora Star is fair game then. In terms of characters, Pandora Star sports an impressively long character list, which harkens back to Hamilton's obsessions with details. Where other authors might not bother to give some background characters even a name, Hamilton provides the reader with their biography. However, somehow I never felt that I lost track of who did what and when. Obviously, a substantial part of these background characters, even if they are named, remain somewhat one-dimensional. Nonetheless, most of the main characters experience substantial character development, even though they might seem a bit cliched at first. Interestingly enough, one of the main characters, Justine Bernelli, on paper, at least in the beginning, is pretty similar to Swan from 2312, or Zoe from Blue Mars, both novels written by Kim Stanley Robinson. All three of them are daughters of influential leaders, spend their time as socialites, or traveling the different worlds inhabited by humans. In particular, there are some very strong and specific parallels between Zoe and Justine related to their inclination to paragliding on alien planets. Swan and Zoe are characters I did not particularly like, to put it mildly. Yet, somehow, I actually quite like Justine in Pandora Star. It is more important how a character develops over time. Obviously, it has to be noted that the character arcs of most main characters extend well into the second entry of the Commonwealth Saga, Judas Unchained. Overall, Pandora Star is a strong, quote-unquote, true first entry to the wider Commonwealth universe. Peter F. Hamilton combines a set of base assumptions into a vast, believable universe which is chock full of interesting concepts and intriguing ideas, to ultimately tell a compelling and captivating story with numerous characters that for the most part are relatable and likable. The story takes a while to get into high gear though, but once it does, there is no way to stop reading.
If you liked this video, you may also enjoy the other reviews and content on my channel. Feel free to leave a comment if you want to discuss the novels or if you want to suggest other books that I should review in the future. Please consider upvoting and subscribing, it is much appreciated. Thank you for watching and until next time.